Hello, my name is John Bernard. I'm the Superintendent of Schools in North Reading, and I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Inside NRPS. My guest today is the Supervisor of Buildings and Grounds for the North Reading Public Schools, Mr. Wayne Hardiker. Wayne, welcome. Thank you, John. I appreciate the invitation. It's nice to be here. It's nice to have you, Wayne. So for the community, I'd like, Wayne, if you could uh, please begin by maybe explaining uh, for us um, what it is to be the Supervisor of Buildings and Grounds for the School Department. What does your job entail? It really, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dream job. Um, it's a detail-oriented, fast-paced, um, um, get it off your desk because there's more coming, and it, it's like the tide. It, it's, it's tremendous fun for me, and I get tremendous support from our, from our administration. Uh, um, it's demanding. It's a tremendous variety. Um, it's, to me, it's, a, it's really it's a dream job. And you've had the job in North Reading Wayne for how many years? This, I'm in my 18th year. Going back historically a little bit, uh, this, uh, I worked in Wakefield from 1996 to 99, and the opportunity came, came to come up here, and my predecessor, Mr. Stiles, who I know him well, still know him well, he's on the building committee. So between the two of us, we've been managing these schools for 44 years. Hmm. Um, so I came up in 1999. Um, and believe it or not, it's in my 18th year. It, it, it's 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 been tremendous. It's dynamic. And it's challenging for me, which I really like a challenge. Um, and there's so much variety that it just keeps me energized. It really, mm. is a wonderful place to work. Wonderful. As you were talking, Wayne, about the years that you've been here, going into your 18th year, and <clears throat> I think of all the guests I've had on the show, I think you're the one that I've worked with the longest. I've been in North Reading for a little more than 14 years, and I think over those over those ye many years, we've developed a nice working relationship with each other. And, and it's um, I don't know that we would ever be able to fully explain to the community the complexities and the and the breadth of your job. Um, you do it you do it in a in a, in a very direct way, um, very much under the radar in a lot of respects. I think you, you are one of those people that the work is very much behind the scenes. Um, but when we sit down and have an opportunity like we do today to really think about it and to, in a sense, kind of discuss that for the benefit of the community, I think we're going to reveal a lot today about, about what it is you do um, with the help of your staff. So you talked about variety, variety in the job and the challenges and how much you enjoy that. I wonder if you could just go into maybe a little bit more detail about um, the, the variety you, you, that you and your department are responsible yeah, for the yeah. interiors of buildings, the exteriors of buildings. Can we can we talk a little bit about that sure, more specifically? Sure. I know when I looked at the job description, uh, when I was in Wakefield and then coming up here, looking at the job description, and I said to myself, it's overwhelming. There's just too many things to be involved in. You're involved with every every aspect, any every 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 wall, every ceiling, every floor. Mm. Indoors and out, uh, heating, ventilating, plumbing, electrical, safety, um, it, it, uh, maintenance, something breaks, something, a leak in the roof, uh, any, any number of things, warranty issues. Uh, it, it's, it, it's trim the, the variety is just endless, and no two days are ever the same. It, uh, and like my, what, what is my day like? And I usually work, I try to work seven to four, if I can. I'm on call, um, something happens, an alarm goes off, I get a call. Mm -hmm. Um, it's an endless, endless variety between the, the, the building. I, I, I like to think I, I speak for the buildings. I, the buildings can't speak to themselves, other than something leaks, you know. That's, but I speak for the buildings, you know, and I look around all the time, walking around. And as you learn your buildings, and I'm still learning the new building, it's, 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 you hear something, or you smell something, or you see something, or you know, you, you, you know your building, you know, mm -hmm. just by walking in. You can tell if something's wrong or if something's right. Um, many times before it even becomes an issue. You, mm -hmm. you, you just, uh, it's, just, it's just a very cool, cool. Well, I think, I think one, of the, one, of the, one of the skills that you bring to the job is the anticipation of things and not to, I think, I, I think you and your department work in a very proactive way to head off potential problems by being alert, being aware, and you know, aware of our surroundings, as you say, knowing the buildings and yeah. being the voice for those things. You get to know those. You spend a lot of time in the buildings, you and do, you know. You do, you do. You and and there's, a, there's a lot of work that goes on outside the buildings. It's not just the interior. It's lawn maintenance, snow removal. It really um, is uh, it's challenging. Uh, yeah. It's four seasons. Um, any mm. new employee now is on probation for 12 months, and the union wanted that so that every employee coming in would get a flavor of every season. Mm -hmm. you know, like spring and fall are different. Sure. Summers are, 
you work the day shift. In the wintertime, it can be very challenging. Uh, two winters ago, 109 inches of snow, uh, roof loading, people slipping, uh, making right. sure they didn't slip, uh, making sure the fire exits are open, shoveling off roofs, you know, it, it, it just, it's demanding. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's very satisfying because I, I can see the accomplishment of things and, and, and bringing people in. And uh, We have 19 employees. Um, we're, you know, we don't have a lot of extra people. But right. They're very efficient. Um, I, I, we offer training, equipment, supplies, uh, anything they need to do a good productive job mm -hmm. every day. So you have not, the department is 19 employees plus you. Mm -hmm. Would you know, this might be a, a, a question that you wouldn't have the answer to off the top of your head, but you, I have a feeling you might. Each of those employees that works um, inside our building, mm -hmm. so if we have two gentlemen that are responsible largely for outside our buildings, the grounds, so to speak. Of the remaining 17, what is, what is a, uh, a square footage responsibility for cleaning for those gentlemen? Is it? Sure. Um, would you know that off the top I do. of your head? Um, we try to structure our staffing around norms uh, set by the government, pretty much, or the state, or mm -hmm. any organizations I belong to. Um, and per square footage, um, like knowing the school and the people that work there and what the workload would be in the course of a day, we're a day custodian. They generally work 6.30 to 2.30 or 6 to 2. They're, they're much more tag tugged in different directions by the, the daily needs of a school. Sure. The afternoon, which is usually 2 to 10, mm -hmm. their day may be more structured. So I've used as a benchmark of, say, 27 to 32,000 square feet per person per mm -hmm. day. Um, and it, that, that's, a more, that's a norm that keeps a, it's not like a hospital clean, mm -hmm. like, you know, where a person would only clean maybe 5,000 square feet in a day. But it's, it's, it's spick and span, clean the bathrooms every day. Right. Um, you know, just make sure everything is sparkling, spotless, you know, and our superintendent sets a pretty good standard for us, an excellent <laughs> standard about keeping, keeping the standards very high, and any, everybody understands that. We have eight, eight, eight staff at the high school, three in the day, uh, five at night. Mm -hmm. We have two at the little, three at the bachelor, and two at the hood school, and we've really fine-tuned that um, so that there's no wasted people. You know, we run a very efficient, yeah. tight, productive operation. Believe me, the results are, I think, really well, good. Well, just the numbers you just, you just threw out of a roughly 27 to 32,000 square. There's two things going through my mind. First is if someone, you know, maybe an average home square footage in, in North Reading might be 2,000 to mm -hmm. 2,700 mm -hmm. square feet or something. So we're talking 10 to 15 times the size of someone's home right. that a person and, might be responsible for square footage per and, night. And what, what does that entail? And like, uh, this person will have an area like the size of his table to clean. Um, that's his area, say, you know, which I've established, which we helped to establish. And what does he do? You know, and, and, and that's, it's all about time management. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and it, and it uh, you know, bathrooms are critical, trash is critical, uh, Mopping floors, dusting, cleaning, make mm -hmm. sure everything's operational. If you see something, a light is out, or you know, it, and it's 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 a pretty tight operation. Um, so there's no wasted steps, no wasted time, and right. people not walking around and um, recycling. It just it's a, it's it's pretty amazing. You talked about the four seasons. What you're describing right now is kind of under a normal circumstance. Mm -hmm. A day like today, for example, where it's a beautiful October day, but that could all be thwarted when we have. A potential for maybe a light snowstorm in the evening, and there's an event at a school, that's or right, that's right. preparing for you know the winter poses its own set. So of we challenges. we watch the weather daily. Uh, recently, a uh, hurricane possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 what do we do? You know, the, the town has a tremendous sure. operation in place, but I think from my standpoint is is looking out for things that might happen. You know, if if if, if there's going to be a high windstorm, you know, I may tell one of the grounds guys. Patrol, go around, see what you see. If there's something, a tree down or something, to be mm -hmm. proactive, you know, catch it before it might happen. We've caught several things like that, just mm -hmm. being aware. Winter is our most challenging season. Right. Um, so we try to limit any, with your input, of course, any snow lost days because of snow. Um, but to be proactive, uh, talk with, work with the DPW, uh, work mm. with our own people. Come out, what time are you going out, you know? 
2 o'clock in the morning. But there's only three inches of snow on the ground, but it's to get ahead of it. So right. we can get ready for school. So we have a normal school day. That's mm -hmm. our goal. One of the most common questions I get, and mostly from students now in this role as a superintendent as opposed to when I was high school principal, is <coughs> what, are the, what goes into a decision around uh, cancellation of, of, of school due yeah, to I know it's very challenging poor weather. You know and you, know, you and I are on the phone either at late at night or early in the morning, mm -hmm. depending upon how the storm might come in. But it is something we, um, we wrestle. I, I know I wrestle with those decisions because you, you want to err on the side of safety, but at the same time we know that when school is not in session, that poses a whole other set of complications. Anyway, one, one, one thing I've learned, knowing you as well as I do, and having a relationship like this is, for me is tremendous, but I know you get up early, you come to school early, you're always here like 6 o'clock in the morning, but if there's a snow, anything in the snow, previous superintendents, they would call me. But what I do now is I call you, mm -hmm. you know, just to let you know what's going on. Because mm -hmm. I know you're going to, you're out there watching, and, you know, it's, it's, and, and we certainly try to have a regular, regular day um, so there's not a delay or a mm -hmm. snow day or something. So right. it's, 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 it's anticipating. Mm -hmm. Right, right it is. That's important. We've talked, you know, I, I think you, the buildings, Wayne, pose, you know, all kinds of, um, of challenges um, in order to keep them in the conditions that they are. And I think, you know, we should feel very good about, um, in this community, the, the, the condition of all of our schools. Um, many, many, many compliments across the board. When I, when I uh, talk to people about where I work and mm -hmm. uh, they, they have visited North Reading for any one of a number of reasons and they, invariably they will always compliment about our, the conditions of our schools and it's, um, it's, it's well-deserved praise. The, the middle high school, um, I want to talk if I could now just shift gears a little bit mm -hmm. about two mm -hmm. of our most recent building projects. The middle high school is I think I can say probably the largest construction project you've ever been involved with, by certainly, by certainly by for me, and probably will, <clears throat> will ever be, um, and probably in, to a large degree for this community, probably the most uh, significant expense and construction uh, project undertaken. I would think so. What, what, your role in that was significant. You and I have worked on the building committee that uh, oversaw that uh, project under the direction of um, Chuck Carucci, whom I think probably everyone in town knows mm -hmm. as the chairman mm -hmm. of that committee. What would you identify as, I'm, I'm going to ask you to identify what has been um, for you the greatest challenge with the work and also the greatest reward? It really, is, it's been tremendous. Uh, it goes, this, this, you know, I've been around since my 18th year, but uh, this goes back in the inception of thinking through, the, thinking it through, uh, architects, uh, you know, uh, designing and, and then the construction. I, I have a construction background, so watching it coming from the ground up, you know, and mm. coming out of the ground, and little by little by little on that, where it was built into the hill, and, and, and the, and the watch, watching them take all the trees down, it was, it was really amazing to see them take the trees down and cut up the stumps and, and, and chip everything, and, and then the foundation start going in, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and then the brickwork goes in, and the steel's, the steel's going together, and the, the windows are going in, and the floors are getting poured, and you know, right. to, to watch it coming together, just it's been to be part of it, mm -hmm. uh, to be aware of it, and to know what's going on has been really been satisfying. And and then and then the high school opens in 2014, and then they, and the middle school opens in 2015. And the phasing, the phasing has been yes. really challenging. You know, mm -hmm. moving people around, and, you know, very very challenging. Um, but to see it come together, um, other challenges have been. You know, construction challenges, uh, operational challenges. Right. We're still working out the details. And There's so much involved. There is. And trying to stay up with the, the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the lighting is all computer-based. Right. The energy management system, <clears throat> totally computer-based. Um, I've been to classes about operational issues, about controlling, heating, cooling, and making sure it runs properly, and just to be aware of how things operate. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first came, it was... It was more out in the field. Now it's more in a computer. Mm -hmm. We can see things yes. in real time at a very specific, down to, down to nuts and bolts, mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in any specific classroom at any one time. And, uh, you know, you can, you can tell. You can tell if a classroom is populated by the CO2 levels. And mm -hmm. if the CO2 starts going to a certain high uh, level, then the ventilation will start increasing. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. really a very sophisticated Yes, building. it is. 
in the wastewater treatment plant, I mean, a lot of people do know, but maybe some don't, that the Middle High School has its own wastewater treatment plant. Very complicated system. Very, a lot to very learn complex. There. Very complex. You've been intimately involved with the management yeah, of that. Mean, there's, there's a lot involved in, you know, flushing the toilet. Yeah, in the town. yeah right. It's exactly. very, very complicated. <laughs> it's very expensive to build, to manage, to maintain on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, but I've seen the result of what goes in to what comes out, and it, it's, it's, it's so clean and so just. It, that's the whole. That's the whole reason for having it. I'm pretty yes. sure. But it's so clean, and they do such a great job managing it. Uh, um, it. It's pretty, pretty fantastic. It is a pretty, and you use the word sophisticated, and I think that's a great way to very describe. Very sophisticated. You know, it very really sophisticated. has advanced tremendously from what we had oh, in our, no question, our prior no question. middle and high school. No question. And. When, as all of this is going on and as all of this learning has, has taken place for you over the last couple of years for the middle high school, we've been balancing the operations at three elementary schools too. Um, and we can't lose sight of that because those schools warrant daily attention just the same as, as the middle high school does. We treat them all as equals, um, knowing each building thoroughly that I do and the staff that in, these, in the buildings that I do. I know operationally uh, uh, most of them are all on the computer now, the yes. little school and the hood boiler rooms are now operational <clears> as far as the energy management system. I can control that from any computer. The bachelor, not as sophisticated as a high school, but almost the same setup as far as energy management. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, 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 it's knowing your buildings and, and the boilers and what's operating, what isn't boiling, and, and you know, if I get a call at any time or from or whatever reason, uh, it, you know, almost knowing beforehand what the issue is before you even get there. Mm -hmm. you know, it, but that, that, it takes time. You know, I, I'm still getting up to speed with this new school. You know, and it, it, it takes time to get familiar with all the, all the operational parts of that. If you, I, I always went away building it. They tell people, look up, look at all the piping, look at all the equipment in the ceiling. You know, all, the, all the different systems, there's plumbing, heating, uh, air conditioning, mm -hmm. um, Sprinkler alarms, fire alarms, speakers, uh, lighting. It just goes. You just look up at one ceiling, and there's one. There's a lot up there. Right. It's amazing. Right. It really is amazing. And the little school you mentioned among the three elementaries, the little school. We are coming to a close this week, really, with um, a, a pretty significant roof replacement project there. Would it's you... almost of the same scale as the high school, middle school. Not, I mean, not, the scale is much smaller, but it's the same. The same issues about. Um, the design issues, the uh, project manager, the contractors, the uh, you know another building project that I sit in all the building meetings and, mm -hmm. um, and here again it was started when school got out. It didn't get finished until school let back in again. But you know many times schools and construction projects don't mix too well right. because of the sounds, the sights, and. But we had a good contractor there, and the owner's project manager is very good, managing all the uh, all the parameters there. But it was we we did almost two thirds or three quarters of the entire school. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's beautiful. Yep. You know all, all the little things that you know I've had some input as far as uh, you know make make it look even better. You know some painting issues, some just just to make it look really sharp. And it really it's it's coming out to make the project complete. Right. And, yeah. and the principal, believe me. Um, you know, she's she's really pleased with it. And that mm -hmm. to me is is very satisfying. Yeah, yeah. No, they really. You, you're right. It was a very well managed project, and very it's come well, out really nice. Managed. And um, we're looking to wrap things up there this week, um, in the next couple of days. We're, we're coming a down to the project. We're coming down to the warranty issues, and mm -hmm. you know, we're gonna we'll get a 20 year warranty on that, which is terrific through uh, Firestone. Um, you know, it, it's 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 a state-of-the-art called the S an SBS roofing system, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a, uh, it's a single ply, but it's, it's, it's glued down, it's beautiful, it's white. Uh, and it's going to contribute significantly to <coughs> extending the life of the little school. Uh, it will, and, now the, 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 as, and as far as the, ins the insulation is much thicker and more, it, it's more, it's, it's a more of a modern design mm -hmm. because it was, it's been a long time since it was re-roofed, and uh, it should save us energy, it, it'll be cooler in the uh, summer and warmer in the winter, you know, mm -hmm. because of the, uh, the insulation and, uh, you know, it's really, it's, it's coming out very well. I think that we, we learn from experience in, in, in the work that you do. Do you agree? I mean, you, you ex no, no, you've experienced no question, no a lot question. and you see, you know, you, you, you take that experience, I think, and you bring it to a place where you know, what, what you've learned really contributes to the next time we might encounter a similar type of mm -hmm, situation. Mm -hmm. That's what I've seen with you. And I think that, that that's been important because we, you know, you have such historical 
um, experiences with the schools now, 18 uh, plus years mm -hmm. now working in, in the district. That, that's, that's not knowledge that can be, um, that can be uh, uh, what, set aside what, very easily. No, I, one, one thing I've, I really enjoy is find out how things work. I, I, mm. I, I wish that, and I'll tell people, facilities job in a school is, it, if you like to find out how things work and you're interested in how things work, and it, it, it's an ideal job. You know, I went to the BU College of Engineering, graduated, very challenging, very challenging courses. Um, worked briefly for Pratt & Whitney Aircraft. Um, worked as an iron worker uh, for a while. Um, worked as a project engineer for a coal storage company in Gloucester for, for a while. Self-employed as a uh, franchise cleaning company. And all these, I call them all building blocks. And all. Mm -hmm. So for me to come to this school department um, and understand how, what the what the challenges are on a daily basis. You know, right. if if I say I keep saying if this if this was my first job, it's like well I can't do it. It's just it's too much because every day there's a lot going on. But it's it's after a while understanding how to manage all that all those challenges, uh, people challenges, building challenges, uh, uh, preventive maintenance challenges, indoors, outdoors, and every no two days. Uh, we, we just planted a tree in the batch of the playground, right. which fell down a year ago. Yesterday, and, just yesterday. We just right? planted it, you yeah. know, and it's and that's another part. You know, what, what, what are we going to do? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get a tree, and it's in the it's in the historic district commission here. Right. And, well, we, we wanted they wanted a sugar maple, so we put a sugar maple, and, and it's the variety, and it, it just. For me, it's so satisfying. Yeah, and it just—it's so—it so stimulates me, and it just keeps my energy level just. You know, I'm, I'm cranking all the time. I think people can hear it and see it right now as well, they're listening it's, to you it's talk a, it's about It's a lot of fun. I, I mean, how many people? You know, why don't you retire and do something? I, I retire and do what? You know, I'm doing something <laughs> I love. You yeah, know, and I, you know, believe me, the support I get is just tremendous. And, you know, it's a nice place to work. It's a tremendous place to work. It yeah. really is, John. Yeah. It really is. Let's let's talk about. I want to go back to because I think <coughs> your 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 grounds department, the two people, two gentlemen that you have working for you, um, that are largely responsible for the maintenance of the exteriors of the mm -hmm. the five schools, the four buildings, with the middle high school being combined. Do they they have a, an extremely vast range of of responsibility, and and it's two people, and it's not just. Cutting grass, it's, you know, I don't know that well, the, you, the community a, realizes the just, obligations they have with athletic just, programs. Just drive around and see what's going on as far as grounds, right. uh, fencing, uh, today lining lining the baseball field for soccer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 the variety is just for these two gentlemen, is, one of them has only been with us nine months, and Mike Parrow has been with us for 20 years, but, mm -hmm. he's, but because of people retiring and, you know, Mike Parrow has been tapped into doing more, even more maintenance right. and grounds work and we're training the new guy to be more versatile mm -hmm. as opposed to just having a grounds person mm -hmm. be more versatile. Right. Um, coming indoors and you know, even minor electrical stuff, minor plumbing, minor heating, just that if I can have someone come in and I have to hire somebody, right. they're already on the payroll, but the outside duties are watching out for bees, um, mm -hmm. hornets, uh, sure. bird nests. Uh, uh, roof drains, plug roof drains, um, plug yard drains. Uh, uh, I say just planting a tree. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just it, it's it, cutting grass, weeding. Uh, summer times are, you no know, two seasons are the same. And right. Making sure the equipment's operational, lawn mowers and weed whackers and mm -hmm. chainsaws. Mm -hmm. and, um, Pretty soon we'll be prepping for winter storm yeah, we'll, preparations. We'll, 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 be, and... we'll be we'll be getting the. Plaza. We have right. a we have a sander. We, we bought a sander so we can sand our own lots if we, mm -hmm. without tremendous help from the town. And um, you know, part of my job is is giving the gentlemen what I think they need to be productive. Mm. And this administration is so supportive. Um, when I first came, we had one snow blower <laughs> and one auto scrubber. Auto scrubber. You walk behind in the it, district. In the whole district. And everybody shoveled. They shoveled, shoveled, shoveled. Now we have 15 snowblowers, so nobody's going to be standing around and waiting, you know, because that's part of my drive for them to be productive. And, right. Um, it's all this winter stuff, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. you know, 15 blowers. That's a lot of snowblowers, but um, you know, we have 15 guys who should be blowing snow as opposed right. to right. You know, it, it's it is really quite an operation. Well, and I think we also. <clears throat> 
work very hard to not have to cancel school when the weather's very poor, high. you know, barring something unreasonable. But we try to we try to have school, and uh, you're to be commended for that, you and your, and your staff. And, and just in a very big way, Wayne, I mean, I, I really think this is an opportunity in a public way to say thank you to you um, and to your staff. You all do a wonderful job maintaining our schools. Um, you know, I know it well, the community doesn't know it, but they're going to know it now. But Wayne lives by the mantra that our schools are always clean, safe, warm, and dry. And with the new middle high school, we've kind of added cool in there sometimes, depending upon the season. But I think the, the mantra of clean, safe, warm, and dry, which is Wayne's mantra, it's not mine, I'm stealing it, but um, is really something that you and your staff live by. And, and I think they, it does really capture um, the spirit of the work that you all do. And, and from agree, all of that, our schools are comfortable, they're safe. Uh, people can come in, they can do their good work as educators, students can do their good work as, as those students who are learning, and um, you're to be commended for it, and I, and I, and I you. thank you and your department, and I, I thank you for being that. my guest here today. It's, it's been fun. Uh, I think my clean, safe, warm, and dry, um, it's my mantra. Um, I think sometimes people think I'm a broken record, but <laughs> my, my daily goal is we have 3,000 people, 2,600 2, students and maybe 400 staff. If I can... In, if I keep all those people, you know, them clean, keep the schools clean, keep them safe, keep everybody warm and cool, and make sure the roof's not leaking the dry part, then I've had a successful day. Mm -hmm. And believe me, it, I like to think we're kind of behind the scenes part of the building uh, structure, uh, but the proof is in, you know, when people come in and do their educational part, and they don't have to think about it. Right the stuff that we do automatically. Right. So right. It, it is really a tremendous little department. It is. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. It was nice to have you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, John. Thank you for watching.